So I firmly believe that every collection should have at least one pilot's watch. And you'll see in a moment that I have more than a few. And I know that divers really dominate the watch landscape, but there's just something about a classic, solidly designed pilot's watch. Now let's say you're in the market for buying a pilot's watch, but you don't want to perhaps lay down $1,000 for a Stova or even 500 for an entry-level Laco. What do you do? There's offerings by Hamilton, really neat modern interpretations in the interstellar. There's all kinds of options out there. Now, what if you want a traditional Flieger style watch and you want to spend, let's say $199? Well, let me tell you, I have the watch for you. So you want to buy a pilot's watch. You want to add one to your collection, feeling that it is an important genre in the hobby. The question is, which kind and which one do you buy? You could buy something like this Seiko here. This is a pretty cool Prospects. It's got a slide rule bezel. And of course, this looks a lot like a Navitimer, but for much, much less money on the used market. You could buy something like this Hamilton Aviator on this really cool Strapsco strap I have it on today. It's classic, it's modern, it's legible. It's got a lot of the things that you're looking for in a pilot's watch. This would be more like a type A dial, for example, in a modern interpretation. You could grab something like this Belova here. Now this Belova is a recreation, although some liberties have been taken in that recreation, a modern reinterpretation, I think we should say, of a World War II watch. This A15 watch, they made 500 copies and that's it. And then it never really made it into production. So they're hard to find on the used market. And that's where this one fits the bill. It's a new release in 2020. And it's just absolutely one of my favorite watches. Again, vintage vibes here with this, completely different styling in many ways. Or if you want, you can go with something like this. This is Alpina's version of a pilot's watch. Much more modern, but of course you can still see a lot of the things that you need in a Flieger watch. It's got large numerals, a fairly big face, very legible, very clear. The triangle is present there at the 12. This is their new 40 millimeter version. On my eight interest, I think it looks absolutely astonishing. Or you could go this route. This is a Courget Flieger, and this Courget Flieger costs around 60 US dollars. Sapphire crystal, Chinese movements, some of them have Miyota. This Courget Flieger is a pretty cool piece. It's, it's finished better than you would think it should be. And although it's kind of dirty here on camera, I've worn this quite a bit. In fact, I dropped it onto concrete from about five feet up and it bounced right back. And I actually was having some trouble with the movement before I dropped it. The crown was getting stuck. After I dropped it, all of a sudden, boom, it's working again. <laughs> so, you know, 60 bucks, you're not looking at a top tier watch. You can spend 60 bucks, you can spend 300 bucks, you can spend 500 bucks, maybe 450 on the gray market or so. Uh, these are up and down because they're not easy to find these days. And then of course you can spend a whole lot more on a pilot's watch. If you wanna get into the thousands, there are all kinds of them. But what if you're looking at Stova? That's a fantastic brand you're gonna spend about a thousand bucks for a legit Flieger German watch. You could spend about 500 bucks and get a Laco. They throw a fairly cheap Miyota movement in them, but you get a legit German branded Laco, and that's pretty cool for 500. Or you can go with the option that I have for you today. This is the Islander Aviator. And there are a few different colorways by Long Island Watch. Now I've been a big fan of Marks for quite a while and after getting one of these in, I have to say I'm an even bigger fan than I ever was. 
Now you might be wondering, why do I have two identical island aviators? And the answer to that is simple. One of these arrived with a problem. The other one is its replacement. So this one here, I received early in December. My wife bought it for me for Christmas at my request and we received it. The shipping took about almost two weeks because of COVID-19. I think we received it early December. I took a quick look at it. I threw it back in the box, put it on the shelf, and I saved it for Christmas Day. My wife wrapped it, put it under the tree. I wore it all day. Now that night, I had my phone out and I was shining a light on the watch when I noticed that right in the dead center, there was a little crescent-shaped, moon-shaped piece of paint, it looked like. It was black for the most part, with a little bit of white on one side, and so that's why I didn't notice it. And actually, on a picture I posted on Instagram, I went back and I saw that it's sitting right about here. So it's Christmas Day. It's around 7 p.m. Now I'm in north of Toronto in Canada. I'm close to Mark. It's a, I think it's about a seven hour drive, eight hour drive to New York. We're in the same time zone. So I said to my wife, can you email Mark to find out what we should do about it? I'm really super bummed, but I know Mark's a good guy and he'll take care of us. So she says, sure. I, I Pass her a picture, she emails Mark. An hour later, <laughs> like, like 8, 8.30, Christmas day, okay? That evening, we get an email from Mark. No problem, I'll take care of it, I'll send you a new one. The next morning we had an email saying it had been shipped, shipped by FedEx. And five days later, I kid you not, on the 30th, this one arrived in the mail. Now this one arrived without a box and it arrived without any papers or anything like that, just the watch, but that's all I need is the watch. I really can't say enough about how great the service is at Long Island Watch. I mean, seriously, under five days to get a replacement watch across the border, I've had a lot of things sit at the border for a week, week and a half easily. I've ordered from Long Island Watch before with their cheap shipping. It's usually about a week and a half to get something to me from New York. So, I mean, seriously, Mark, amazing customer service. And, and I even hesitated talking about how this one had issues because I really like the company. I want to support the company. But I think in the long run, showing how if there is a problem, how Long Island Watch will take care of you, I think that goes a long way with people. And you have to understand, this is a, a $200 watch. So for Mark to jump in like that and take care of me is amazing. So what is to be done with this one? Well, I'm gonna take off the watch gecko strap, put on the old one and pop it in the mail and send it to Mark. He said, just put it in the mail whenever you get a chance. He knows it's New Year's and all that. So that's what we're gonna do. But I just thought it would be interesting to share with you that story. Now, I have two different versions here. I'm gonna set one aside for now. And I would like to focus on the, these two models here. And I will make sure that there's a link in the description to both of these models. This one here is a cream, slight tint of green to the dial. It's a type B, obviously. And if you're not familiar with type A, type B, just Google it. It's pretty easy to figure that kind of stuff out. And the cool thing, about this one here is that the entire dial is loomed. I think you can even see under these crazy bright lights that I've got going on here in my studio. I love this thing. I love all of it. And before I really geek out about how much I love both of these watches, why don't we get into the dimensions, some specifications, and just kind of let you know what you're dealing with here. So the Islander is 42 millimeters in width. 48 millimeters lug to lug, under 12 millimeters thick. And for those of you who like to change the straps, it's a very handy 22 millimeters. Overall, this is a very wearable size for a lot of people. Now 42 might be a bit on the big side for some people, but remembering that this is a pilot's watch, which is meant to be large and in charge. It's meant to be legible and often worn over a jacket back in the day. 
I think 42 is a great size for a watch like this. The case is nicely brushed. On the back, you have an embossed plane. It has a signed crown with the Islander logo on it. The lugs curve down nicely. Everything is well done, well brushed. The case design, it's, it's minimalist, like a pilot's watch should be. Nothing fancy going on here, no chamfered edges, no polishing. And that's what you're traditionally looking for in a Flieger watch, especially in this style. Now the dial, as you can see, is nicely printed. Nothing is blurry, everything looks great. It's a little bit flat in this design, and the reason for that is there's no loom applied to the numbers, to the lines, which often give it a, a sort of depth, and you'll see more of that when we look at the Type A. But that's okay because the trade-off here is that loom. This thing glows at night. I mean, seriously, just look at that. And even at seven in the morning, when I wake up and it's still dark out this time of year in Canada at seven in the morning, this thing is still shining. The hands and the second hand, which are all in black, can easily be seen. They have no loom, obviously, but they block out the light from the loom. And so this thing just glows. Now here we have the black dial, same dimensions and everything. We don't need to go over that. Although you can see that this one is coated. It still has the Islander logo on the crown. Uh, this I believe is bead blasted and then coated, which is very interesting that, that Mark really wanted to make that happen. He felt it just gave it more of an aesthetic that he was looking for. And it really is very matte. I mean, it, it just looks super cool. It really does. The, the dial, as you can see, has white hands filled with loom, loom on all the numbers. But I really, the highlight here is that orange seconds hand, which lends it a bit of a Damasco vibe, a bit of a Zin vibe as well. Like seriously cool on this black leather strap. I didn't bring in the strap for this one, but the straps are pretty much the same. It's a genuine leather strap. Here you can see the jet on the back of this one as well. Um, it's comfortable. It's fairly thick. I think it'll be durable. It doesn't excite me, to be honest, but I think what he's done here is he's provided you with a basic, durable, quality strap that he knows if you're not a watch enthusiast, you'll buy this, you'll get a couple years wear to the strap, no problem. If you are a watch enthusiast, he doesn't wanna spend a lot of money, I mean, if I'm putting myself in Mark's head, on the strap because he wants to put the money into the watch. And boy, did he put money into the watch. $199 for each of these. They have an NH35 movement inside of there, screw down case back, 100 meters of water resistance, screw down crown, sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. The fit and finish is fantastic. The hands, everything is well applied, uh, well printed. I mean, it's just 199 bucks. You're gonna pay a lot more than that for something of less quality. Now you can spend less money. You can go to AliExpress and get something that looks similar to what we have here, but it's not going to be the same. This AliExpress doesn't have the same fit and finish. It definitely doesn't have the same robust movement. The loom is nowhere near as good. The finishing is nowhere near as good. No screw down crown. This does have sapphire crystal, no anti-reflective coating on it. So, you know, there's some trade-offs for these things. I know you're familiar with the NH35. They're pretty standard workhorse movements, but of course it's got a nice pop on it. If you uh, pull it all the way out, you're gonna stop that seconds hand, move this down, put it into first position, and oh, 
I always miss first position. You can wind it down there, pull it out. Oh, there we go. And change the date. Nice and easy. Make sure if you're new to watches, you don't change it between nine and three because you can break a tooth on that date wheel. Uh, turns nicely, begins to change just before midnight and finishes just after midnight. Screw it down. Now, I've got three of these in my possession. They all feel exactly the same way. They all screw down very, very nicely. And honestly, I hate, I got big fat fingers and I hate it when I can't seem to find the threads and screw it down and I always worry about stripping it. And, and honestly, these ones are fantastic. Absolutely no issues there. And this is what the Islander looks like on my eight inch wrist. As you can see, it wears extremely well on my wrist. I think for some of you with six and a half inch wrists, that might be sort of the max that you want to go, but you could probably pull it off because of the style. And I know it's identical, but here is the white version, the full loomed dial version of the Islander Aviator on my eight inch wrist. Well, I think that about covers it for today. These are just an amazing buy, fantastic value. You can definitely spend more, you can definitely spend less, but if you're someone like me who wants a Fleer watch and is just not prepared at this time to spend a thousand dollars on a on a German Flieger pilot's watch, then I think this is the watch for you. You can spend less, but I just don't know if you're gonna get the quality and the longevity that you're gonna find here with the Islander. Really, this is a truly fantastic buy. Both of these are great additions to my collection. I don't see them going anywhere soon. I love them both, I wear them both, and I am really happy to have purchased another watch from Long Island Watch. I know this sounds like a commercial. It absolutely isn't. Mark has, I don't know, 200,000 subscribers. <laughs> he doesn't need me to peddle his wares, but I just wanted to show them off for you today. I just wanna say thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also would like to say thank you for your support over this last year. I think my first video came out in March and I edited that video on my phone. I mean, man, it was rough. And I've learned a lot over the past year and it has been a pleasure to get to know many of you. I hope to continue this into the new year. I am really excited to work with some other people in the watch community to see some watches. I have some really neat watches on the way in 2021. Now I know that 2020 has been really tough for a lot of you. It's been tough for me too. And this watch community has really been a huge support. Just tremendous people in this watch community. So a huge thank you to all the friends that I've made, to the people who have supported my channel, to the companies who have uh, trusted me with their watches. And I don't know why you do, but thank you. I uh, just, God bless you all. Thanks for watching. If you wanna like and subscribe, go right ahead and do that. But I can't tell you what to do because I am not your dad.